Hello! Welcome back to my Justifying Bard series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the unique skills Bard has to offer and how to maximize this potential. First on the list is Reign of Death. This is an underappreciated skill that many bards will disregard for non-AoE situations. It shares a recast timer with Bloodletter, so for single target fights, Bloodletter should always be used, right? Well, not always. Chances are your healers are cramming as much accuracy as they can into their gear, but might still be in the low 500s and probably do miss a few DPS skills. Opening fights with Reign of Death can go a long way with helping those arrow 3s land and making your healers feel better about their DPS contributions. Always try to open fights and other big phase changes or landings with it. Coordinate with your healers to find out when they anticipate throwing out DPS skills and consider working Reign of Death into your rotation. While it is true that many of the fights this raid tier are healing intensive, there are times, especially at the beginning, where healers can throw up dots and help increase raid DPS. I don't recommend trying to keep Reign of Death up on the boss at all times, as this is a waste of DPS and focus. While we're busy making the healers feel good, let's move on to a cross-class skill, Mantra. While this is not a bard-specific skill, it cannot be used by a machinist. Yeah, the 5% healing buff isn't going to make or break a raid, but it can help out in between monks' usage and definitely has a place, especially for Sizzle Sparks and AAS's Soft Enrage. Coordinate with your healers and other members that have this skill to work out a rotation. Better heals means less mana used on healing, and I don't have to run Mage's Ballad in combat for Savage 5 through 7. Keeping with the theme, Second Wind is another cross-class skill unique to Bard in the Machinist matchup. This skill is good for at least 2 to 3,000 healing, which can be a lifesaver. This especially comes in handy for fights where you might be spread far from the healers, such as A7S, and gives you a nice buffer in case of mistakes or bad RNG. For A6S, I have Blood for Blood on when Tether Barrages drop, and Second Wind lets me survive if I get targeted for both mechanics. In A7S, Sizzle Beam is a very spicy dot that absolutely wrecks bards and machinists, and it also comes in handy for those pesky balls. Second Wind also helps during legislation for A8S, so you can keep absorbing balls and resume DPSing in a timely fashion. Rounding out the cross-class skills, we have Internal Release, which increases crit rate. Crit is king for all DPS classes, and especially effective on bards, so this is a no-brainer. The other two skills, Blood for Blood and Invigorate, can be picked up by Machinist as well. Back in the land of true blue bard abilities, we have the Warden's Paeon. Before 3.2, this was only really useful for pre-pulls as it had a cast time. 3.2 buffed this to be an instant cast skill that removes a debuff or can be used preemptively to remove a future debuff such as pacification. I have this set as a macro to cast on my warrior, who is always third on the party list, and I use it whenever ACT calls out that he has used Berserk. I have another button for manual targeting. This is useful if somebody gets clipped by Chakrams in A6S, as this instantly removes the detrimental paralysis. Please keep in mind, this generally cannot be used for most CCs such as stuns, debuffs such as increased damage taken or damage down, or boss-specific mechanic buffs. While on the topic of 3.2 and macros, you are now able to cast Flaming Arrow directly underneath a target without clicking the ground and risk clicking other players, which was a huge source of frustration. This can be used on bosses or other party members, as I do on our main tank in A7S before Quick Thinks lands. This has the obvious implications of doing damage to a target you're not currently near, but keep in mind it cannot be used to help with cage targets. Repelling Shot is an interesting skill that actually plays a very significant part in augmenting Bard DPS. On paper, this says modest off-global damage and functions as the opposite of a gap closer. In movement intensive fights, learning where and how to use Repelling Shot to get to where you need to go and get back to casting helps maximize uptime on the boss. However, executing this correctly is the hard part. There have been many a raid wipe due to inopportune repelling shots, whether it be into the wall or into a mine, and mastering this skill is what separates the men from the boys. 
Casting while against a wall also sometimes leads to hilarious glitches teleporting you clear across the map. Please look forward to my fight specific guides to see when and how I use this. The last skill worth mentioning here is Iron Jaws. This weapon skill snapshots your current buffs and refreshes the timer on your dots. This is the single most important skill and greatest factor when determining your effectiveness on Bard. You should obviously refresh dots right before any crit buffs fall off to increase blood letter proc chances. However, learning the fights inside and out and perfecting your Iron Jaws placement will help ensure your dots rarely fall off, preventing potency loss from needing to reapply them. Many of my encounter specific guides will focus on this, such as casting right before boost in A6S. Thanks for watching. Next up, gear and stats.